What's up, you little sluts? I'm going to be beating the proverbial dead horse that is Euphoria by doing a makeup look that is inspired by the characters on that show. I don't happen to resemble any of the characters on that show because Mother Nature, being the cruel mistress that she is, has decided to bestow upon me the bone structure of a sad, misshapen cabbage patch kid. Albeit one that isn't as chubby-cheeked. A cabbage patch kid with a tapeworm. That's my aesthetic. Now, do I know how to do makeup? Absolutely not. However, not displaying a single iota of talent within a field has never stopped me from participating in it. As you can see, I am completely bare-faced. Now, I did say that I don't resemble any of the characters on Euphoria, but I'm gonna take that back. I think I kind of resemble Zendaya if she had, like, fetal alcohol syndrome, and frankly, I'll take it. Please take a second to admire my reasonably good skin. It is my second most valuable physical asset, the first being my tatas that, when disrobed, resemble Forrest Whitaker's eyes. Think about that joke for a second. That's enough time. Now let's gather my tools. This is concealer that I bought in, I'm gonna say the late Obama administration. I was a senior in high school when I purchased this and it was exclusively for the prom. I went up to that Sephora counter and I was like, give me the Halle Berry baby. And she was like, you do this every time. That is not an actual shade, give me a number or get out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Karen. Don't get pissed off at me because you're working your way through night school. The second is another concealer that I- should I do- should I do that thing where I'm like, This is my product. <laughs> and this is the concealer that I'm using. I don't want to do that because it's just going to unfocus on my face. And we all know that's why you're here. This is also- I'm, I'm gonna say- expired? She's rancid. Ugh, I love a woman with some stank on her. This is Maybelline Tattoo Studio. I'm going to be using this on my eyebrows because as you can see, they are as sparse as farmlands during a famine. This is my e.l.f. contour kit. As you can see, this is very cheap. This is, I don't, I, I think made in Vietnam. No offense if you're, actually no. I was gonna say no offense if you're from Vietnam, but you know what? I take that back because one time I was in Hanoi and a kid that was riding on a little motorcycle spit in my face. I caught it directly in my mouth and I winked at him. He didn't expect that, did he? Don't mess with the US of A. It's great to whip out if you want to like impersonate a police officer because it looks like a giant badge and you're gonna be like, <laughs> FBI. It works better if the person that you're trying to deceive is like visually impaired or very old. So that's my advice to you. If you're going to impersonate a cop, exclusively target the elderly. These are my lashes. I know they're crusty as all heck, but do you think I care? I do just a little bit. I've worn these bad boys at every single type of event. Funeral, wedding, bat mitzvah, brisk, all mine. Lip liner, mind you, works on both pairs of lips if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> these uh, eye, sh eye shadow sticks, I don't actually know what they're called. I do remember purchasing them right before my prom. I had to reapply these bad boys several times during that night because I was dutty whining it to the Reading Rainbow theme song. In said bathroom, I stumbled upon my friend making out with one of her amigas. Now I stood there and watched for about, I don't know, three minutes because I'm an ally until eventually they noticed me. I said, I support you. And they said, that doesn't make any sense. That was a black power fist of solidarity. We're gay. And I said, honey, <laughs> I don't see color. That's the difference between me and you. This is the Revlon eyeliner. I will say this is great if you want to fill in your pubes just for that extra volume. It works really good with the brow pomade. I do enjoy this because whenever there's a partner who happens to be slithering down to my nether regions, when their face comes back up for making me speak in tongues, I like to look at their face that's now sort of tinted brown and go, oh my God. You've caught it. black itis. And they go, what is black itis? What, what is that? And I say, go look in the mirror. And then they start freaking out because they think that they've caught like some sort of reverse vitiligo and that they're turning black. And then I look at them and say, why are you freaking out? What are you scared of? What, that you're gonna have to start saying ax instead of ask? Here is some eyeshadow again. She's busted. <laughs> She's been through it. Don't feel too bad for her though. She voted for Jill Stein. Here is some blush that sort of resembles the shade of a baboon's ass when they're in heat. And finally, we have two types of gloss. The first being this bizarre shade that kind of looks like the test tube that Grimes crawled out of. And this mango butter lip gloss. And let me tell you something. The second that I put this on my puckered little pursed lips, I feel like a high school boy bully named Mackenzie. <laughs> I'm ready to be homophobic. And finally, there's this. Um, what is this called again? Highlighter. <laughs> I have a tenuous grasp on the English language. Let's begin. <sighs> We're gonna mix <coughs> these two bad boys together. Now listen, I watched all of season one and season two of this show and I, I cannot tell you what exactly is going on. I don't know what the heck Jules is doing. I don't even know if I would say she was, she was barely in the show. She had that little um, boys don't cry character arc with that binder, ugh. Cat and that little twink boyfriend of hers, Ethan. Ugh, ugh. I don't know how to say this. I want to shrink him and insert him inside of me like a tampon. 
Ladies, I know you can relate. Kat, just like Jules, was completely MIA. McKay was gone. I don't know. They replaced him with that little uh, wee bowling character, Elliot. Cassie needs to be committed. Maddie is still being a baddie. I will say the fact that they did not show her beating Cassie's ass at the end of the finale genuinely pissed me the hell off. Listen, I watched this show for violence and graphic nudity. That's it. I do kind of miss Kat's entire arc where she basically was just like mean to men online, which I mean, is what I do, but like I don't get paid. There was only one time in which this sort of interaction happened IRL. It was because I was going to my local 7-Eleven. Now, originally, I would just go into the 7-Eleven because I like to go to the Slurpee machines and just sort of pour uh, the icy mix directly into my mouth because I don't I don't believe in cups. Um, I just, I don't like anything that contains a liquid. I don't trust it. And the woman that worked behind the counter would be like, Ay, gordita pincha, which I think means like beautiful woman in Urdu or something. But I think that her visa expired or something. The guy that replaced her basically struck up a deal with me where he was like, if you degrade me um, every time that you come in here, I will basically just let you run amok in the store. And you know what? I don't have any dignity. I'm fine with that. I was gonna do that anyway, but now I get to openly bully some someone and they won't call the cops on me? <laughs> it was Christmas. I don't trust Nate one bit. I don't care that he was nice to Jules. So what? I still want to dog walk him. I don't understand how Rue is walking around like she does not owe a full drug dealer like 10k. Listen, I don't go back to Reno because of overdue parking tickets. You think that I would be walking around going to- going to high school? I mean, albeit she is going to a high school where I don't think that any of them actually have books. I've never seen them do homework. The only thing that they're learning how to do is contouring and snorting lines in the bathroom, which I will say is a much more profitable skill than algebra. I'm certain that I've overdone it. I don't know how to apply makeup and also speak to people. Okay, that's done. It's over. You think I was gonna set this concealer? <laughs> I'm not. Cassie and Lexi's mom. I'm just gonna say, it's scary to see your future reflected on a screen like that. I will say she did marry a hot guy who, I mean, turned out to be a junkie, but still, that's a win in my book. I know that the Cassie hate train is due to pull in and everyone is like, yeah, she's, she's stupid, stupid idiot. I will say this. I know that y'all act messy, okay? I don't believe for a second that you guys haven't done something that was stupid when you were all up in your feelings because of a man that would D you down so good that you forget your own last name. As another messy individual, I've never slept with my, my best friend's ex, mainly because that nigga was crusty and he had ankles like a chicken. But I don't know how any of you can talk about this fictional character with such animosity when I see what you guys post on Twitter. I know what you guys do at night when the sun goes down and the heathens come out. I guarantee you that most of you have done at least something that is equally as pathetic as what Cassie is doing right now. Not me though. I will in the future uh, because, you know, I don't learn from my mistakes or the mistakes of others, but at least right now I'm in a position to judge. I will say I gagged for uh, that moment where Cal basically read his entire family and he was like, you are my biggest disappointment. Wife, you're not even hot anymore. And son, what you search online to whack your weed to, Nasty. Which, mind you, Cal, you literally had your tongue in somebody's poop shoot I, earlier in that episode. I don't know if you're one to talk. I do love the rise of Maddie Perez because the amount of, like, messy people on Twitter who are like, I'm Maddie. Um, yeah, that's, that's the character that I am. Girlie, you're pre-diabetic and you're afraid to message your crush first. How are you, Maddie? Another thing that I genuinely am confused by. Lexi is an actual teenager, right? Is Fez not a grown man? I know that he looks like if Mac Miller sustained a brain injury, which I, was a joke I made prior to season two. And then the first episode actually did confirm that's basically his origin story. Regardless, is he not at least several years older than them, which would make him in his 20s? Why are you messing with this high school girl? This is my impersonation of Cassie. Yeah, I know. I know that I'm acting like a complete and utter mess and Sam Levinson made it in my contract that I have to show my titties every single episode. But you cannot judge me. Meryl Streep wants what I have, which is a UTI. You guys ever think about how Drake is probably getting his ass licked as we speak? I think about it all the time. I'm gonna work on these for about a minute more and if they don't end up looking good, I will just accept the fact that I'm gonna look like 2012 Demi Lovato. Does this look good? Who cares? Next, I'm gonna be putting on these little caterpillars. What do y'all think is gonna happen with Lori and Rue? Like, I, I'm, I'm genuinely still on this because the little epilogue that they give at the end where she was like, I was clean for the rest of, for the rest of high school. That's not what she sounds like, but just like imagine, okay? Lori is the scariest type of person because she never raises her voice. It's sort of like that thing where any drug dealer that's named something really cutesy 
um, you know has like fully ripped someone's nose off of their face. Same deal. I knew a guy like that once. His name was Raphael and he had a really non-distinct accent. He was sort of like a, a little Tommy Wiseau. Also because we never knew what age he was. He swore that he was like 25, but I mean, this man was on dialysis, so I don't believe it. Years later, we found out that he was the guy that directed Two Girls, One Cup. <laughs> It's a small world. By the way, I am trying to get together the funds to make the sequel to Two Girls, One Cup, Three Men and One Bucket. Ah. You know, every day I wake up and I have this sort of a sinking feeling in my gut that my life is never really going to be filled with joy. I think at best I'm going to have periodic moments of uh, contentment. Ah. I will say that the criticisms of the show being too unrealistic. It's like, okay, we know. We know you weren't popping bottles and like getting aborties in high school. I get it, okay? I too was a sad virgin. I still am. But that's not the point. The lighting scheme and the melodramatic nature of it is meant to capture the the feeling of being an adolescent. That's why I managed to resonate so deeply with the youths of today. I mean, frankly, I was just happy if I came home and there was still a hot pocket left in the freezer. But you know, that was my experience of adolescence. I know that you weren't popping your pinky for Bitcoin so that you can go and, and buy dominatrix gear, right? Okay, not all of us were that cool. But you can relate to the feeling of being maybe chubby and isolated and having boys overlook you. You might not be popping zannies at the back of a party while your best friend is giving the Gluck Gluck 3000 in the bathroom that's adjacent to you. Not all of us went to a state university. But you might have been, like Rue, one of those children that was overdiagnosed and overmedicated from the time that they were a small child and it absolutely scrambled their brain. They never got me though. <laughs> they never got me. I'm not exactly sure what type of person would resonate with Nate. Maybe if you, if you were closeted, maybe if you had like a hot dad that used to bang twinks and you found out about it, but like... You kind of liked it? Now at this point, you may be thinking, what the hell about this basic club promoter on a Wednesday night makeup look has anything to do with euphoria? And that's because I haven't gotten to the eyes. Speaking of Nate Jacobs, when I tell you, if you are tall, white, and like have relatively good bone structure, the way people are literally willing to forgive anything and everything that you do just because they want you to pipe them down. Girlies, get some self-respect. I'm talking to myself in this respect as well. I think that I should have done the eyeshadow before I put on the lash. <sighs> You're so stupid. Eh? This is actually what it would look like if you were in high school and you were trying. You were trying to attain the same level of aesthetic as these girls. You will fail miserably. I am one of you and you are one of me. Also, let's talk about the play. How in the heck did Lexi know about the carousel ride? Cassie was like, she was at the end of the sixth episode, glaring into that auditorium window, huffing and puffing like one of the velociraptors in Jurassic Park. I don't know why homegirl had to expose herself like that. If that was me, if I was the one having all of my messy business me exposed like that in front of the entire school, I would have kept my mouth shut. I would have been in the audience like, oh my god, who's that about? Being a woman is a never-ending series series of um, performative acts and suffering. Do you guys think you'll ever find love? I think I'm so emotionally dead that like I, I don't see it in the cards for me. Oh, there you go. Okay, I managed to put on the lashes. Am I the only one who's a little confused as to what on earth Nate's plan of action is? He rats his dad out to the cops. His father, who's hanging out with non-binaries in a warehouse drinking natty lights. It's the most interesting crossover of like drag race and frat bro energy that I've ever seen in my entire life. And you know what? I love the solidarity. Now this is the point of the tutorial where I could say, now watch this, now I'm gonna end up looking like Jules. That's not possible. <laughs> Guess whose camera decided to stop working the second that I started doing most of this eye makeup. It's okay though. It's okay. I'm gonna light my abuela candles and pray on it later. As you can see, it is a... Uh, it's giving more Cleopatra than it is giving Euphoria. But you know what? That's okay. Cleopatra was a baddie. An inbred one, but still. I feel like this is a look that she would wear when she was on her way to, like, cuck Mark Anthony. By the way, such a modern name. I hate that. Mark Anthony sounds like a guy that works at Kinko's. Not a guy that was engaging in menage a trois with Julius Caesar. I've decided to do an outline atop the blue. Is this going to backfire on me when I end up looking like a brat stall that melted in a house fire? Maybe. I'm all about the yesification of self-destruction. Zooey Mama is genuinely one of the greatest quotes in all of, in all of literature. I'm talking like, the lady doth protests, methinks, Jesus wept, Zooey mama. Okay, I messed this up. I messed this up, but you know what? It's fine. I'm like a Monet, baby. <laughs> you have to step back to appreciate me.
Let's call it sufficient. Actually, let's not. Let's mess around with it even more. I love cheese. I love eating cheese at night. Every night at 2 a.m., I'm overcome with this ravenous hunger for cheese. I gallop to my kitchen on all fours, devour shredded cheese. You're not a baddie with a fatty, unless you're eating shredded cheese at night, baby. This gloss, ugh. Oh my God, it smells like industrial chemicals. It tastes like a sweatshop in Beijing. This legitimately looks like alien seminal fluid. Now to complete the look, I've got these bad boys. That's right, Claire's Boutique shoplifted. As we all know, all the girls on that show accessorize to the point where their heads look like a magpie's nest. Okay, finishing touches that made me look worse. And here's the completed look, babes. Ah, uh, oh. Is it working? Am I deceiving you? Has it succeeded? Now imagine me walking down the halls of Euphoria High. God, I love walking around in a school where all I carry is a tiny little purse that has lip gloss in it. Mm. Do you guys want to meet up in the exposition bathroom? I have to do a line before algebra. <laughs> I'm illiterate. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling yummy. <sighs> Hello? <laughs> yeah. I don't think any of the characters act like this. I'm a natural. I fit right into the show. Sam Levinson, make me a character, or else. You have 24 hours to respond. Okay, that's it. <laughs> it's over. Why are you still here? Shout out to my patrons! If you would like to donate to my Patreon, then the link is on the screen. Help support my degeneracy. I would appreciate it very much and might even pat you on the head and call you a good little girl. Like comment, subscribe, solicit me. I don't mind.